the cord away. Yes. <laughs> We're just ready to jump right in. I know, and folks are still coming in, but I um, want to just invite you to uh, introduce yourself and, um, you know, think of a time that you have felt really supported in your work. Uh, it could be, you know, most recently, I know we're in the throes of kicking off the, the school year, it could have been, you know, uh, a while ago. Um, but just to kind of think about, you know, what uh, that support really felt like and how it impacted you and your work. Uh, just for a little, a little warm up, just get us thinking about support and, and how we, you know, how it impacts us. Um, so, yeah, feel free to to find the chat and introduce yourselves. Good morning, everyone. Um, Megan, if, if we are ready, I will go ahead and uh, get us uh, started. I want to thank you all for joining us for this session, um, building a solid foundation to support OER adoption on your campus. We have an amazing panel and we're excited to see all of you contributing in the chat. Um, our panel is made up of Texas OER advocates, creators and experts, and we'll hear from them shortly. Um, but we are definitely excited for all of you to be here and we look forward to today's conversation as well as the continued connection and support that will be happening throughout the Open Texas Conference. But we do wanna introduce ourselves. Um, before we begin, I am Carrie Gitz. I'm a director with the Division of Digital Learning at the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. And I am here with my uh, with our partner from ISKME. Um, I'll have Megan introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Nice to see you all. My name is Megan Simmons. I lead the training and design work at ISKME. And we have been the thought partners, collaborators, uh, conspirators <laughs> to, uh, you know, support this uh, OER initiative in Texas the past few years. And I'm really excited to connect with you all and share uh, and highlight some of the, the, the great work that we're seeing across the state. So thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you, Megan. Before we turn it over to our panel and start the discussion, I do want to share a few things about the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board's Division of Digital Learning. Our division was established in November of 2020, so we are still in our young years, um, but our mission is to provide leadership and advocacy for digital learning and higher education that promotes, sustains, and advances a quality digital learner experience. And our team and those of us in the Division of Digital Learning are made up. You can go to the next slide, Megan. We have eight passionate individuals who contribute to and provide leadership uh, for the goals of our division. And these individuals um, are represented here on the slide. We have a small but mighty team that I work with and I'm excited to, um, to be a part of that division. But our three main goals that we focus on are raising awareness of, building capacity for, and recognizing digital excellence. And in the open education space, these goals, um, we actively support you all in the work that you do in, in OER in Texas. And these goals are represented through a variety of our OER focused programs, research and services. And on the next slide, we have a list of some of those upcoming programs and supports uh, that we provide for you all. And I'll just give you kind of a brief rundown. Some of you may be very familiar with these. Uh, first of all, it, our OER text repository, which is our digital collection of OER, which includes resources as well as groups and collaborative tools for connecting and sharing. The repository is turning to this week. And if you attended the plenary session earlier, you heard uh, Kyla talk about some of the events that are coming up and I'll share a slide at the end. But next week we will be celebrating the two year anniversary of OER text and we have some events to share uh, for you to continue uh, on this energy of this conference and learn more about the repository. We also provide professional development 
training opportunities with our partners at ISKME to provide um, support, advocacy, training for you all to grow your OER work at your institutions. We have OER state funded grants and we are having a, um, we should be able to announce later this fall, um, the next round of state funded OER grants. So be on the lookout for that. And I'll show you how you can find out more and get more information about some of our upcoming opportunities. One of our exciting programs uh, and projects is our forthcoming OER playbook, where we've collaborated with representatives in the Texas OER community to create a resource that outlines the steps needed to implement change and advance OER at one's institutions. This resource is currently under peer review by collaborators across the state, and it will be openly licensed and customizable to meet your needs and meet you where you are at your institution's journey on o in OER. We also are working on the project called the One Project, which is our OER nursing essentials. We've partnered with OpenStax for the discovery, feasibility, research, and planning phase of this project, and also collaborated with nursing faculty to research and design and plan for creating OER that supports the AACN nursing essentials curriculum. And in the coming months, uh, we will hopefully be able to share more information about the next phase of this project, which is the implementation and creation of the OER in this area. We also have some research that we participate and we uh, collaborate with ISKMEON, uh, a, a regional analysis of OER, which is a looking at the adoption and use across the state, as well as a content gap analysis, which we looked at analyzing OER for courses in highly transferable courses in high demand fields. If you're interested in learning more about the regional analysis, there is a session happening this afternoon during the microblock se sessions, analyzing OER gaps across Texas regions to advance statewide OER support. So I encourage you to take a look at that. And with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Megan and she's going to introduce our panel. Great, thank you, thank you, Carrie. Um, all right, so, um, you know, as we've learned over, over the years, you know, supporting this work and connecting with uh, leaders, uh, it's really important to, you know, build that solid foundation uh, of support. Uh, and engagement and, you know, plan as much as you can uh, when you're getting started with, with OER. And I know uh, we have a wide variety of folks uh, who maybe um, are just getting started, you know, uh, breaking ground on their foundation. Maybe they're just, you know, doing their initial measurements, you know, kind of sussing it out. Uh, maybe some of you, you know, have, have built a frame. Um, <laughs> or maybe some of you are pouring concrete. Maybe some of you are, you know, um, um, that your concrete's already dry and you're ready to, you know, build up from there. Um, but we wanted to, uh, you know, just kind of um, hear from folks who have, you know, been through the, the foundation building phase. This was uh, <laughs> a nice little image to, to represent kind of what we're talking about here and, you know, thinking about all of the things that you need to build a solid foundation, uh, you know, to really <laughs> bring the the uh, metaphor home. So, you know, thinking about the people you need, right? Uh, the folks that you need uh, to, to bring together, you know, in the beginning to uh, make sure your, your foundation is solid. Uh, you can see they're holding tools, right? So it's important that you have access to tools to support this work to, to build together. Uh, also, you know, different resources. Uh, time is a big one too. So, you know, each of us, all of our foundations, you know, kind of look different. Um, and I know we're all at different places, um, but we wanted to bring uh, some folks who have kind of, you know, been, been through this, um, are at least, uh, you know, um, kind of building up from their, from their solid foundation to really, uh, you know, learn from them. So I'm really excited to uh, introduce our panel uh, from throughout Texas. We have uh, an incredible uh, group of uh, partners and leaders uh, in this work. And um, the, I'll just um, introduce them quickly and then we'll jump right into hearing their stories. Um, but these are some of our partners that uh, you know, have been uh, doing this work and uh, have a lot of knowledge and uh, you know, experience to share. So 
first off, we have uh, Tamar Bell from North Central Texas College with us. Uh, we have uh, Gabby Hernandez from University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, uh, Victoria Brame from Lone Star College, Nathan Smith from Houston Community College, and Dr. Teta Banks from North American University. So uh, that's, who, that's who we have, uh, our, our panel of, of experts with us here today. And I'm actually gonna just um, stop sharing my screen so you can actually see them. <laughs> and uh, you know, to open this up, what uh, we uh, have asked them to share is not so much like a formal presentation, but really uh, thinking about um, you know, what it really takes to, to, to break ground in, in these OER initiatives. And so um, maybe we'll start first with uh, Tamar <laughs> Bell at the top of the list. Um, and then we can just um, move, move through uh, the panelists just to, to learn a little bit more about how you began your OER adoption on your campus. Um, anything that you wanna share about <clears throat> what you've done to support OER at your, at your institution on your campus. Uh, if there's any specific tools or guides, our best practices that you want to uh, share with us around kind of, you know, how that uh, has come together. And then, uh, you know, a couple, um, a couple words about the impact that you're seeing thus far. Um, so we'll, we'll just start with this kind of breaking ground <laughs> phase to learn uh, from our panelists. And uh, let's start with Tamar. Welcome, Tamar. Welcome. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Can you all hear me okay So. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm Tamar Bell and I teach speech communication studies courses at North Central Texas College and I am so excited to be here with all of you and um, share a little bit about my OER adoption journey in the last year. Um, I wanted to start off by just kind of sharing my why as how I began because I think that's always a good starting point for me as an instructor is like why do I find this work important so that when it gets hard I make sure that I have some perseverance in the process. So my why was just because I just, uh, like the community college students that I teach, was a community college student. I uh, am first generation college graduate, and I was working 40 hours a week when I was going to community college. So it was really challenging. And I remember um, someone had told me about the older edition hack. Like if you buy an older edition, um, you can save a lot of money on textbook. And since I was paying myself through college, um, the first question I would ask every instructor when I walked into the first day of class is like, can I get an older edition and how old can I go before I lose relevancy? So um, speaking of that experience, I knew like when I learned about OER as an option for textbooks that that was something I wanted to implement in my classroom because I knew what a challenge it was for me to have access to the textbook. So um, I, I started this journey by just helping my division chair vet through two OERs for two other courses. So we kind of got my, you know, um, just ideas rolling and how I wanted my OER to look. And um, last semester, my uh, division chair had asked me to adopt an OER for interpersonal communication. And that one was a little bit harder because it's not as common as a lower division communication course, uh, at least at our, at our campus. So um, I did a, a lot of digging, a lot of process, but in terms of tools, I would say the most important thing for me was just to know before I started what I was looking for to just kind of set a foundation, like what am I looking for? And to, to set that with, you know, other collaborators in our department and then administration um, and students to have a voice before I even started that journey. Um, the, the biggest help, uh, and this is kudos to Megan, was the Creator Academies. <laughs> I uh, participated in Creator Academies from the THECB and ISKME Professional Development. And I just felt like I learned so much and I was like, taking everything they gave me and putting it into practice because it was so helpful to me. And I, I ended up adopting an OER for the interpersonal communication course from Libra text. And one of the most helpful uh, things that I learned was when um, I wanted to kind of navigate through, you know, how do I 
remix this textbook to make it work for our student ba base and for our, our campus community in general. And um, I know that when Megan told me that I could actually remix it right within LibreText, like just knowing about the features that each um, support has to offer was really helpful. Um, and al also the OER Texas repository. So just, just having that support from the repository, the professional development was the thing that accelerated me the most in the learning progress. So I would highly recommend um, just, you know, utilizing all of those things. And I think the main impact I would say is to kind of wrap up my part of this is um, I feel more connected to the material. So going through and adapting the OER myself as an instructor, I feel much more of a direct connection to the material that I'm relaying to my students. And I think um, and hope that that's contagious to our students also. <laughs> so thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Tamar. That's awesome. Wonderful. Um, now let's hear from, from uh, Gabby at um, University of Texas. Uh, Rio Grande Valley. Let's hear about your your OER foundation that you're building. Hi. Yes, we're working very hard here at UTRGV. And this, this was a huge question. I felt like there were so many different pieces and so many things I wanted to share. So instead of just putting a thousand links in the chat, I made a small um, little document. So that way, all the little things I'm talking about, you can direct it directly links out for you to review uh, later. So a little bit of how we started. We started in the beginning with just uh, talking from the library perspective. We started just departmental meetings, like going to departments, talking about OER, what it is, and that you know kind of led to one-on-one -on -one meetings. So we were doing it in a very small scale. But then to grow, we participated in the OpenStax Institutional Partnership Program, um, and we were asked to repeat it. So we did it for two consecutive years, and it really, really helped our program. So any of those who are interested in that, what it helps you do is it facilitates lots and lots and lots of programming. So it, it kind of gets you out there to try different things to see what works best on your campus and what type of outreach your faculty engage with. So that really helped us quite a bit. And then we also worked with our campus partners. So I connected with our Center for Teaching Excellence as well as our instructional designers because that's where faculty think to go. They think I need to talk about my course or I need to talk about my the resources for my course and they think those offices. So instead of creating my own professional development and a new, you know, pathway for faculty, I just integrated myself with the with the professional development calendars that already existed on campus. And that really helped our attendance rates for a lot of um, our professional development sessions and getting faculty interested in OER. So the things that the library and the scholarly communications department does to support OER at UTRGV is kind of a lot. It's kind of everything. So we have the textbook affordability project. And within that project, we um, focus on faculty recognition. So our affordability advocates and letting other faculty know, like, this is the process, this is what it looks like, this is the impact. We also have resources and support for faculty, and that covers everything from like the basic, basic what is OER to who's using OER on campus to, you know, if they want to create OER. So it has, you know, different areas that faculty can kind of take a deep dive um, depending on what area they're interested in. We also provide funding opportunities like OER adoption grants as well as professional development grants. And of course, to help with course marking as well, because the whole reason that we're doing this is to support our students. And if our students don't know about it, then, you know, how are we getting that message out? So we also support that as well. So <clears throat> tools, there's lots and lots of tools um, and things that I have found really, really helpful from the open education librarian perspective or, you know, working as a library in the library, whether it's your full job or not. Um, I participated uh, individually with the Spark Open Education Leadership Program. I didn't go through the program itself, but they offer their curriculum openly. So I did it uh, as my first step and it really helped, you know, kind of get my feet like settled of like, what is OER and, and what can I do? And then I participated in the OEN certificate in um, OER librarianship. And that was 
an amazing program. They uh, are having a acceptance for applications right now. So if you're interested, there's some information as well as an information session on Friday that's gonna happen. And what this helped me do was like understand OER from the library perspective, as well as kind of scaffold my program. Like what, what could it look like in the future with having a whole bunch of people there supporting me with institutions of similar size? So um, I found that very, very beneficial for the people who are actually having to build the program. And then of course, there's the Creative Commons certificate for librarians. There's the Texas Learn OER modules, which um, I put my faculty through at UTRGV. We host little mini professional development grants and we put about 30 to 40 faculty a year through it. And I have gotten such great feedback. So if you're a faculty member or just learning, you want like a short overview and a certificate to show for your effort, I highly recommend those modules. Um, and then take advantage of the community, the open community and the listservs is just a wealth of information. And everybody is so kind and so giving. So don't be shy, reach out to those listeners in the community. And I have some of those linked there. So if you're not sure um, of which ones are available, um, they're there. And then hopefully a new tool that will be able to help you is right after lunch, I'll be presenting about um, tracking your textbook affordability. So uh, creating a template to help you keep track of the million things that we do as open education practitioners. And so the impact that we've seen, we've seen quite a bit. Um, and I have a link for that as well for you to, to view in your own time. So I know it was a lot, but I hope having links helps you <laughs> think about it uh, a little bit more. That's awesome, Gabby. Thanks so much. That's so helpful to see. And um, wow, it's very impressive what y'all have done. <laughs> right on. Um, all right, now let's um, go to uh, Victoria Brain from Lone Star College. Hello, everyone. Um, so I am definitely more of an OER enthusiast at this point, um, rather than an expert. I was actually just hired in July um, at Lone Star College Sci-Fair. And so um, we are a system of colleges throughout Lone Star, um, but we are decentralized and, um, you know, a lot of priorities, initiatives between um, the various college campuses are not necessarily aligned. Um, and coming into this position, I was already um, very much an OER advocate, having um, engaged in various conferences, committees, community groups, and really wanting to um, continue that work here at Lone Star College Sci-Fair, but found that there really wasn't a clear vision or direction for OER here. So basically how we've started, and we are still building the foundation, um, we've started with um, by forming an internal library committee here at Lone Star College Sci-Fair. And then we also have an informal system committee where we're kind of talking to one another and what, you know, things that we're doing at our various um, campuses um, to advocate um, for OER. And we recently, um, a group of librarians at my campus um, participated as a cohort in the resource for the resource retreat um, through OER. Our text and ISME, and I think that that was a really great opportunity for us to um, refine a lot of ideas that we have and um, pretty much establish a, a rough timeline of, of what we want to do um, and some of our action steps moving forward. And one of the things that we are really just working on to begin with this semester and throughout the rest of the academic year is just educating faculty and fostering buy-in. Um, we have seen, um, as far as impacts thus far, we have seen um, more buy-in from other librarians and even some um, support from our college administration. Um, but we really do see that faculty buy-in as our biggest barrier at this time. Um, so what we're really focused on right now is updating and creating digital items um, to kind of have a marketing campaign. Um, I did want to share in the chat um, something I'm hoping to adapt for our institution. This is from um, the University of Texas at Austin. This is their free and affordable course materials review request form um, that I would love to adapt so that we have um, something for 
faculty who are already interested um, to reach out to us right away and um, you know request a review, uh, request materials, request individual consultation. Um, we already have a LibGuide up, but we are looking to update that as well as there is a system web page um, that's just kind of a placeholder right now and we want to have some more um, relevant and interactive resources there such as like the Texas Learn OER um, modules. And I do have a colleague, I'm not sure if she's um, here today, um, but she um, had put together a presentation um, as part of a previous OER text cohort that we are, here it is in the chat, um, that we are planning to use um, with our teaching and learning center, the body on campus that's in charge of our professional development. I know one of the other panelists talked about um, getting these educational workshops on the, you know, just regular professional development calendar for your institutions. Um, so we're looking to um, do that and offer a few sessions again, just to educate uh, faculty and foster um, that buy-in and perhaps later looking to establish a community of practice with our teaching and learning center. Um, around open pedagogy where we're maybe um, looking at shared readings and discussing um, that and you know just as an additional way to foster that buy-in. Um, one other thing that I really loved that we're looking to do, um, this was part of the resource for the resource retreat, um, the idea of having a marketing campaign with textbook hero posters. Um, so finding uh, faculty around campus who have already um, adopted or created OER and um, highlighting them along with hopefully some student impact and testimonials um, and really getting that together now, but amping it up for um, open education week in March. Um, and just for right now, we've kind of planted seeds um, with faculty and and um, you know, letting them know that the library is available to support them on their OER journey um, through our division meetings and our subject liaisons, just kind of letting them know, hey, we're here to help, reach out to us if you, um, you know, wanna have an individual consultation. But again, we are looking to grow this program um, and um, you know, have more concrete things that faculty can engage with um, around OER. And so as far as kind of what we've already done, I feel like my bit is short, but I have a lot of ideas to share of what we're um, looking forward to doing in the future for the next part of our panel. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to the next panelist. Awesome. Thanks, Victoria. And you're getting some love from your colleague. I think that's Dory Scott, right? In the <laughs> in the chat. Hi, Dory. Nice to see you. Um, awesome. Great to see that support. Um, yeah, now let's um, continue on with um, Nathan Smith from Houston Community College. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Nathan Smith. I am currently the interim chair of the Philosophy, Humanities, and Library Sciences Department. I'm a philosopher by training. Uh, in 2017, I took over the role of the OER coordinator at Houston Community College. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that experience. And I'll try to walk you through kind of the steps that we took to set a foundation and build the program that we have at Houston Community College. Um, I'll kind of try to talk about this in a general way as well that might be applicable to you. So the first thing we did was establish a cross-functional steering committee. This included people from advising and enrollment, financial aid, as well as academic and workforce deans, faculty, librarians. Um, we then identified an OER coordinator, so that was me. We selected someone who was a, a faculty member and I received a release time to do the work of managing the OER program. A lot of these programs are managed out of the libraries. We chose to go with faculty. I think that's a decision that, the, that your steering committee should probably make at some point, but we found that it's really important to have someone whose job it is to promote the program, who's the touch person for that. One of the really great things about that we had going for us at the time was that we had just become kind of a one district college rather than having separate colleges. So we were able to kind of maximize impact and have scalability really quickly. I think um, if you're operating as separate colleges in a district system, it may be a little more challenging to do that. Um, the next thing was we had a big grant funded initiative that we were able to launch. It was a Z degree program and we still offer that and we still run that. Um, I think a Z degree is a, is a really great program. It has a lot of benefits. It's not the only way to build an OER program. You really ought to think about whether that's the right way to go for you. But again, that's the kind of thing, I think some kind of big 
announcement really helps to galvanize sort of support and get people and build visibility for the program. Um, so I was able to give some all faculty presentations and, and started building faculty contact lists. At the same time, I was enrolled in the OpenStax Institutional Partnership, like Gabby mentioned, that was an excellent way to, first of all, get in touch with a cohort of other OER practitioners around the country. And second of all, it helped me identify like goals for advancing the project. And so I had measurable outcomes that I had to get to every month I would report back on that stuff. And having that kind of structure is really, really helpful as you kind of set up because you can get lost in the all of the different things you could be doing with your OER program, it's really important to stay focused on sort of measurable objectives and, and trying to get towards uh, some kind of an end goal. Then training, training was really important. So I had great success with in-person cohort training where I bring everybody in for like a two day training seminar uh, with like 30 people or 15 people or whatever we could build as a cohort. That, that was really successful. I then did in-person seminars for a couple of years and that was not very successful. This had very few participants and it was really scattered. And it was hard to get everybody to complete a training sequence. When the pandemic hit around the same time that Carrie was building the Texas OER Learn, I built a, an internal canvas shell for our uh, professional development and, did, and start doing an OER online training. I now run like four sessions of that a year, or I did, and um, that's really successful. We get a lot of people going through that. So online training is really helpful. And with OER Learn out there, you can adapt that for your own, for your own um, uh, institution. And uh, I think it's a great way to go. Um, then we, you know, we definitely track data. One thing I'll show you is our, our Z degree program. If you go to the page, um, you'll see at the bottom, we have our stats that are, you know, we, we probably enroll about 25,000 students a year. And that is unique. Uh, that is uh, seats, enrollment seats in zero cost books courses. Um, we've, we estimate we've saved, you know, somewhere on the order of seven to $10 million of the course of our four year, four, five year uh, program. So um, lots of, uh, lots of good stuff there. We have, uh, I make uh, regular presentations. I've made annual presentations to our board of trustees. So they're ad advised of the program and I'm able to deliver on sort of our outcomes and objectives. Um, I also want to um, share with you what our libraries have created. So they've created like discipline specific lib guides for OER, as well as a general landing page for open access and open educational resources. It's really helpful. Uh, faculty can share out stuff that they are using or have adopted in their program. I also have a, uh, a web page that talks about some of the policies. Probably the most useful thing for you, a lot of people ask about faculty stipends. We offer stipends, we have a budget. One of the great things when we did our grant funded thing was we had to create a match and we created a department budget line. It's been huge. If you can get a kind of regular budget line for things like uh, the big things that we use are travel, going to OER conferences and um, uh, um, registration for CCC OER, which is a wonderful community for community colleges, and then also um, uh, stipends. And so that's been really big. And so, I, you know, you could look at our stipend policy. Um, I think I am sort of running up on time. Oh, we do. We, we definitely have had some success with external grants as well, with the THECB grants, as well as um, we've partnered on a couple of applications for the education department grants and have recently received one. And the final thing I wanna plug is that um, a colleague and I founded a, a Houston area OER consortium, which has been a lot of fun. We meet quarterly. If you're in the Houston area, you should definitely connect with us. Um, Victoria, I have a note to reach out to you. and. Um, and it's, it, that's a great way to build local community. We can talk about uh, sort of what we're doing. Um, I've gone out and talked to different campuses um, to, to talk to them, to their OER programs. And I think um, sort of that having that sort of local um, community support is also huge. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. I know there's there's so much to talk about, but it's great to get a nice little snapshot into into this amazing work that you all are leading. And, you know, it's really, it's interesting. We're all kind of at different um, phases, but, you know, there's some common things around, you know, kind of finding your people, <laughs> getting your committees together, making sure, you know, that you're, you know, leveraging the resources that you have available or, you know, finding those that you need, getting the right tools and partnerships together and coordinated. And of course that ongoing support through training, so. Uh, that's uh, so wonderful to hear what this looks like across campuses. And um, last but not least, I uh, would love to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Teta Banks from um, North American University to share uh, how she's uh, building uh, this work on her campus. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for allowing us to share our ideas, our practices, uh, what we have been learning. Uh, and we're a little different in terms of our approach than our, my uh, colleagues. Um, it wasn't an individual report uh, approach. It didn't come directly from the library sciences. We tend to operate as a committee of the whole. So, so we have our president, we have our development office, we have our faculty, we have our library director, all are working together as, as a committee. So when we, we had done OER materials before and our library director is very good in terms of having a wonderful collection and she's been sharing that over the years. I think the impetus really came during the COVID. So you know how necessity is the mother of invention. So what happened is that sparked you know, the need in other areas. We knew about distance uh, education. We had our distance education director involved in it in our IT office. Uh, but and then when the uh, RFP opportunity came to develop more courses based on the need. So all of this was need based and evidence based in terms of what we were working with. So we got the list of those transferable courses that really we wanted to address the students because, you know, we lose them after the first two years. So that, the, especially the first year is a critical year for uh, retention. So how do we retain them? And, and, and what was found, of course, was that cost was a major factor in terms of the continuation of students. So that's the way we approached it. So when we got the um, RFP, we already had OER uh, resources through our library director. Uh, and so we pulled in not only faculty from each of the courses that was listed, but we also pulled in departments that would be related and assistant in some way. So in terms, so we looked at the OERs, we looked at the courses, we then sent it out to all of our faculty and said, okay, you teach these courses. Who is it that would like to be a part of this? And we were had wonderful responses from our faculty. So all the faculty who wanted to, to uh, participate, participated. We covered most of the courses, many of the courses that were identified by uh, the THECB. And then we started working together in terms of uh, giving guidelines in terms of how to put the information together based on what the criteria was. And so we had periodic meetings of not only all the faculty, but all of the resources offices that we would need. And so we did the uh, got the grants done and then it was a time for developing the materials. And what I asked all the faculty involved to do was keep a matrix, a, a journal, Step by step, what did you do as you develop each of these so that when it came time for us to do final reports or even just for our own record keeping, how was this done? What were the barriers? So you sort of use the smart code, okay? So what things work? What were some barriers? What do we need to change? And that was an important factor. So some changes happen in terms of what uh, some thought maybe a, a material that students may do well with that found that maybe that wasn't, maybe it needed to be tweaked. And then of course, we were very cognizant to be inclusive, to look at the DEI, uh, DEA uh, types of issues, especially in uh, reading materials. You know, were they inclusive of race, gender, economics, things like that? What was the wording? And in order to test that, those that got the development grants uh, utilize student assistance. So they were our testers. <laughs> so, and they, and it was a great experience for them. They get to be sort of like research assistants at this level, but we got to test out is, is, is this kind of question, is it too easy? Is it too hard? Has the material uh, been adapted to prepare you to be successful 
on these tests or in this area. And so we utilize students all the way through the development portion. So we are now uh, at full implementation of 10 in 10 courses uh, specifically for this part of OER. And then our faculty also have partners. So like Dr. Smith, uh, we, one of our partners and we, we others have partnered with some uh, other of the Lone Star campuses because we also get, we are four-year institutions. So our two-year institutions are feeders. So those courses that are aligned, we want to make sure that what we have uh, developed out of our courses, they, it would be adaptable and usable and something that would be effectively used uh, by any other faculty. So at this point, we are at the uh, uh, implementation portion. We have already, every semester, we do surveys of students and faculty who have used OER. And we will move towards looking at a comparison uh, to see what are what are their responses having used OER? Do they prefer that over hard copy stuff or what changes would they want to see? So that we are using, again, our evidence-based surveys to guide us in terms of what changes or additions or modifications uh, we will need to put into that. Uh, we've gotten great reception from the students. And of course, at the top of the list is the cost issue. So uh, given our population of students in many of the institutions, just anyway, no matter what the population is, of course, uh, cost is going to be a factor. So if we move out cost as a barrier, then what is left to address? And that's when we identified other uh, areas that need to be addressed and included as we develop these materials. Um, even though uh, we're back to face-to-face -face in most, uh, as most institutions are, uh, it's not that OER is just relegated to distance learning because we were here, you know, all of us had been doing distance learning. It's a little different. This, this has to do with, uh, and, and not using OER just as a supplement. So some courses could have a choice they could use as a, as a supplement, or in fact, that can be their entire um, um, text resource, okay? Uh, and then uh, we were fortunate, our, my li the library director is on, on, on the call. I'm so glad to see Ms. Schroff, she's just fantastic. Uh, we also listed courses at the beginning of, for course scheduling, we indicate in the course listing, which ones are OER. And we're now looking to see what's the response level uh, between a, a, a student seeing that and then uh, in a non-OER and does that make a difference, things like that. But we are hoping, that um, all of our faculty that teach uh, the courses that we have already developed uh, will utilize OER either as their sole or a supplement, but we're hoping you know, to move it in that direction. And again, given consideration to accessibility. And that's what we're talking about, accessibility, equality. Uh, the United Nations just did a session uh, yesterday uh, the education session, and key in that was accessibility, equality, and quality, uh, and that is what we're trying to achieve uh, through our uh, through our work. So I, I do like the imagery you used, Megan, in terms of <laughs> mixing it, I, but we didn't take it that roughly. We, we enjoyed it. <laughs> You, so, didn't, you didn't get we, as dirty as some of the rest of us, I guess, Dr. Banks, right? <laughs> so we, we are really looking forward to expanding uh, the OER offerings in other areas of the courses. And hopefully uh, it becomes um, a stronghold, you know, and, and, a, and, and a permanent part of our curriculum. So it is not just because we're trying to address this need right now because of COVID or because of our economic issue, but it becomes a regular part. And just let me add that we've hosted two international education conferences, and those conferences mainly focused on the effects of online education during due to the COVID. And this is from, we had about 20 some nations participating. So not only uh, are we going to share it, uh, you know, with our institution and our partnering institutions, and I do want to thank uh, the coordinating board and uh, um, your OER office for all of the seminars that were given. Our faculty attended those. We were always we always had access to our TAP, our technical assistance partners. They were wonderful. They always answered <laughs> whatever, even if it wasn't a question. They said, "Well, at least give some feedback. Do you think we need to change this or that?" So that was a wonderful uh, asset uh, to have. And as I mentioned, with our international institution partners. We, we're looking forward to sharing what we have developed with them. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. 
this, and I love that you, um, you know, are, are focused on the DEI or DEI access plus accessibility um, work as well. It's so important. Um, and I know we're we're in our final minutes, um, but we do want to just um, some of you and we've been sharing in chat, you know, or we're asking, you know, where can I get this course or where can I, you know, see these resources. Um, if you haven't yet um, taken a look at the OER text um, library, uh, there's in addition to, you know, finding course materials, there's collaborative spaces as well. Um, and we actually have a collaborative space for this group that we want to invite you to. Um, and so, um, and there's also lots of other <laughs> really great spaces you can see, uh, you know, what the committees are or, and um, communities are doing here. This is, um, this is the uh, site, uh, if you haven't yet been here. Uh, thanks, Kyla. Kyla is always so great with the links. I really appreciate your support. I feel so supported. Thank you, Kyla. Um, but uh, for those of you that are maybe, you know, just breaking ground right now and, and wanting to get started, uh, this um, Getting Started Hub, which is a specific kind of wing of our library where we've curated some of these resources that campuses have found helpful, is a great place to start. We have some professional learning collections on OER basics and teaching online. We have this best of Texas section here where we have um, some um, resources from grantees and different institutions and OpenStax was mentioned here. Um, also the Texas Learn course that Carrie was an author of that, um, that Nathan mentioned um, is uh, also available here. We have some great videos from different um, leaders in Texas sharing their experiences with OER. There's so much here. So this is this is your space. This is your community space. There's lots of different groups to get involved with. Um, the Digital Learning News and Events um, group is a great one. We created this one for you all and just kind of pulled some of our favorites, <laughs> favorite resources that we thought might get uh, help you all um, building your foundation. So there's um, links to uh, the intro to OER uh, modules um, and uh, this um, resource from Dory and her collaborators uh, that was mentioned earlier. So lots of good stuff here. So I'll put a link to that group in case uh, you all wanna join um, so we can keep this collaboration going. Um, but I wanna uh, you know, open it up um, to our panelists, if they have, you know, we just have a few minutes left. Um, but if you have anything that you want to share related to um, kind of what's next, where you're taking this work, uh, any tips for our uh, folks um, that are uh, with us today, I'll just kind of open it up to you all and then um, hand it to Carrie for uh, some uh, final remarks. But um, any of our panelists want to share kind of what's next for you all, how you're expanding this work, or any tips for our for our participants? Yeah, I wanted to jump in. A lot of our next steps have kind of already been covered by other panelists, um, like um, external grants, applying for the OpenStax Institutional Partner Program, um, the OEN Certificate and OER Librarianship. There's so many great resources out there, but one thing that I feel like we need to do, especially in building the foundation, and I had already kind of typed something in the chat, so let me go ahead and hit send, um, but really focusing on data gathering. Um, there was a rough survey that wasn't very well advertised put out a year or so ago, um, and we were really shocked to find that a lot of um, the faculty responses um, said that, you know, textbook affordability wasn't really an issue for students. Um, so we're starting um, by looking at developing two surveys, um, one a textbook affordability survey for students, and then um, another faculty attitudes toward OER survey. And then one of the things that I really, really loved in my research that I hope that we can do at Lone Star is a textbook listening tour, and I um, link to the article abstract where I was kind of inspired by this idea, um, but just visiting um, various departments or divisions in their own meetings when they're talking about um, materials for, you know, the following year and just really seeking to understand um, how they're making those decisions and, you know, what parts of their curriculum they're looking to cover through text and whatnot, and then figuring out, you know, are there any gaps that maybe OER could fill or are there any materials that you don't 
don't like that there might be an appropriate substitute. Um, so just really going out into our campus community and seeking first to listen rather than to push an initiative, but also getting valuable information for our OER committee and how we could um, promote that um, with those groups. So I shared the link to that article in the chat and I'll be short and sweet. Thank you. And Megan, we are at time. So if you could just switch to the last slide, uh, I just want to announce, Megan did a great job of sharing uh, how to join all of the groups in OER Techs. But next week, we are celebrating our two year anniversary of the repository. So we have made announcements on the, on the repository of how you can join and participate in these further uh, training and collaboration sessions. So we thank you all for your time and we this is so inspiring and i'm just enjoying all the connection and community um, and we hope to see you all throughout the conference and also next week at our two-year anniversary of oer techs awesome thanks everybody and i see thanks gabby and nathan for sharing some tips in the chat um Oh, we, we needed an hour and a half, maybe two hours for the session, but um, thanks for, for sharing um, your knowledge and experience with us. And this isn't the end, so please let's keep the co uh, collaboration going. There's lots of ways to stay engaged and lots of support from the community. Um, and uh, we just appreciate you all so much. We hope you have a beautiful day and uh, let's stay, stay connected. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you all so much for for the amazing information. Thanks all Thank for you. attending this awesome session. Great turnout today. So I'm going to stop the recording.